is part two of the nuclear chemistry notes. You should follow along right where you left off in your notes from nuclear chemistry part one. This lecture is mostly about half-lives. So we're going to talk about what half-lives are and how to solve half-life problems. So first of all, what a half-life is, it's just the time that's required for half of a radioisotope to decay. Remember that's just an element that's undergone radiation like what we talked about in part one. The longer the half-life of, of a radioisotope, the more stable that means that isotope is. Okay, radiochemical dating. Radiochemical dating is also called carbon dating. You'll hear it called that. You may have even heard of it before. And radiochemical dating is used by scientists in the field to determine the age of an object by looking at the amount of radioisotope that's left over. So now we're going to look at a few half-life problems and how to solve them. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is solving the same problems that are in your notes, but I'm going to do them on the whiteboard so that you can see it a little bit easier. So the first problem told you that you have 165 grams of technetium-101 and it has a half-life of 18 minutes. And they want to know how much is going to be left over after 90 minutes goes by. So this is really the easiest way to set up a half-life problem. So what you can do is you can write minutes, half-lives, and remaining grams. So I like to start at zero so I know where I'm coming from. So at zero minutes, after zero minutes have gone by, You've had zero half-lives, nothing's happened yet, and you're starting with 165 grams. Okay, so then let's say 18 minutes goes by. So we know 18 minutes is the time it's going to take to have one half-life occur. So there's been one half-life, it's been 18 minutes, and all we're going to do to figure out how much is remaining is cut that number before in half. So half of 165 is 82.5. So after one half-life, 18 minutes, there's 82.5 grams remaining. Okay, we have to go up to 90 minutes because they want to know how much is left after 90 minutes. So now for our second half-life, we've now had 36 minutes pass. So we added another 18 minutes on. So after 36 minutes have passed, now this number is going to get halved again. So now you'll have 41.25 grams left. Okay, so we got to keep going to get to 90. So adding another 18 gets us to 54. So now we're at 54 minutes. We've had three half-lives happen. And now we have 20.6 to five grams left. Okay, we need to go a couple more. We're still not to 90 minutes. So if we add 18 more, that gets us to 72 minutes. That's now the fourth half-life. And now we have 10.3125. Again, all I'm doing is taking half of whatever the number before was each time. Okay, last half-life. We're going to 90 minutes, so 18 more minutes gives us 90. That's the fifth half-life, and we want to know now how much is going to be left. So we half this again, and your answer will come out to 5.15625. So that's your answer. After 90 minutes and five half-lives, this is how much grams you have left. Okay, on the second problem, it's asking us um, about a radioisotope. They don't say which one, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. So it says we have 10 grams of it. It's going to go through four half-lives. So, and it says the half-lives are 2.75 years, but we really don't need to use that, and I'll show you why. So again, we'll start with zero. So we'll say uh, no half-lives have happened. And how many grams you have is 10. Okay, so after one half-life, we know it's going to go to four, right? So we can go ahead and write our half-lives out. One, two, three, and four. 
So after one, we're going to have half of 10. So that's five. Okay, and then for the next one, we're going to half the five. So that'll be 2.5. Then the third one, we have to half again, 1.25. And for the fourth one, we half again, which gives us 0 0.625. So after four half-lives, that radioisotope now has 0 0.625 grams left over. So you really don't even need that information about how long the half-life is at all, unless it wanted to know how many years had gone by for it to get to that fourth half-life, but they didn't ask that. So that's basically an example of how you would do half-life problems. So hopefully this video helped you figure it out. See you later.